What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here, and in this Unreal Engine 5 Blueprints tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily add a day-night cycle to your game using Unreal Engine 5.5's new experimental day-night sequencer plugin. Now, I've got my day-night cycle set to 15 seconds in total, which makes everything move a little bit fast, and it looks a bit janky. It looks a lot better when you slow it down and a lot smoother, and you can tweak a bunch of the settings inside of this uh, actor that comes in the plugin. But I'm also going to be showing you how to subscribe uh, event dispatches to certain times of day. For example, I've got these lights on the back wall here, which at dawn will switch off and then when the sun sets and it is dusk they will switch back on and you can do this for any objects in your world at any time of day but i've just got these lights to show you as an example and guys if this tutorial turns out to be of any use or value to you whatsoever you can support what we do here at pitchfork academy by wishlisting our new game coming out april 16th called Skyblocker. We're very, very excited for this one. It's just going to be $10 and will be a great way to support us here at Pitchfork because if this game does well, then, well, I'm going to quit my day job and I'm going to be making a lot more tutorials for you guys. But without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty, guys. Now, first and foremost, welcome to the new and improved Pitchfork Academy. This is the crucible in which we are going to be learning Unreal Engine 5 blueprints. The first thing I'm going to do is head to edit and plugins. And if I search for day, you'll find day sequencer, this experimental plugin. We're going to activate this plugin. Uh, just hit yes and restart now. And now that my editor has restarted, I'm going to go up here and click on the cube plus icon and search for day. And you'll see this sun moon day sequence actor. I'm going to click this and it will add it to my level. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to want to do is reset this transform. So over here in the details panel, I'm going to reset the location to 000. And then I'm also going to go up here in the outliner and find this folder lighting. And I'm going to select everything in lighting and hit delete. Because if you find this sun moon day sequence actor in your outliner and have a look in the details panel here uh, in the components section you'll see that it contains all of those lighting elements that usually come in the level it has a sun and a moon but it also has the exponential height fog sky atmosphere skylight component volumetric cloud and sky sphere component the next thing I'm going to do is select this volumetric cloud component here. These volumetric clouds have been added in 5.5 and they sap quite a lot of performance, uh, especially because they're drawn all the way out to the horizon here. So I'm going to select the volumetric cloud component and I'm going to change this tracing max distance mode to distance from point of view. And you'll see that that reduces the number of clouds significantly. You can also reduce this trace max distance right here. I might change this to something like 35, uh, just so there's fewer clouds. Uh, it depends on your game. Uh, and, you know, you might just want to head to the settings up here and change your engine scalability settings uh, to something a bit lower if your machine is struggling. But uh, I like to reduce these volumetric clouds straight away because, uh, you know, in prototyping, you don't need something so heavy here in your level. The next thing I'm going to do is delete a few of these walls, uh, not this uh, very special wall at the back here, because we're going to be using this uh, as part of our setup today with the lights that will switch on and off. So let's start familiarizing ourselves with this sun, moon, day sequence actor. If you select it, you'll see a bunch of settings down here, uh, such as you can preview the time of day that you're seeing, uh, so that you can change settings for night and day or whatever. Uh, and down here, you'll see a day length is at 24 hours. This is the length of the actual day. But in game, this time per cycle is the time that matters. So if we set this to something like, let's set it to 30 seconds and we hit play, you'll see that the entire day night cycle 
will last only 30 seconds. So this will be good for testing. I might even reduce it even more so we can more quickly get from dawn to dusk. Now let's have a look at uh, subscribing some event dispatches so we can make things happen in our world at certain times of day. So I'm going to start by creating a light blueprint that I'll add to my wall over here. So just in my content folder, I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint class of type actor. I'll call it BP light and BP light will contain nothing more than a spotlight like so. And I'm going to place a few of these in my level. I'll just rotate this down 90 degrees and move it out from the wall a little bit like so. And I'm just going to hold alt and click and drag so that I have four of these on my wall here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is create another blueprint class that will act as a kind of mediator between my day night cycle sequence and any actors that I want my day night cycle sequence to sort of react to. So I'm going to right click and create another blueprint class of type actor and I'll call it BP underscore day night uh, manager, something like that. And I'm going to drag this out into the world like so. And I'll just set its location as 000, so I know where it is, but it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to open up my day night manager and I'm going to add a couple of event dispatches. Let's call one on dawn and let's call the other one on dusk, like so. And now in my event graph, what I'm going to do is drag out each of these and I'm going to create an event for each of these. Let's just call this on dawn event and on dusk event. And I'm also going to drag them out and call them from these events. So I'll drag out on dusk and call. And basically what these event dispatches do is when this is fired, a message is sent out and anything that subscribes to these messages can have logic that is run uh, based on when these are called. So just to give you a better understanding of how that works, I'm going to go to my BP light here and in the event graph on begin play, I am basically going to set up this BP light to subscribe to these events that are called in my day night manager. So what we can do is actually put in a delay until next tick. And this just makes sure that the day night manager has initialized on begin play. You want to be careful uh, whenever you're doing this sort of stuff on begin play, because you do need a reference uh, to this blueprint and it needs to be initialized first. So after uh, one tick, we will get actor of class and the actor of class that we're going to get is our BP day night manager. And then what we can do is we can uh, search for a sign on dawn and you can also search for bind event to on dawn. But if you search for a sign, it will automatically create a custom event to go with it. So uh, if you search for bind, you wouldn't have this custom event, then you just need to search for custom event and add a custom event. And then you'd need to connect these delegate pins like so, but it's just easier to search for a sign. And we can also drag off the return value here and search for a sign on dusk and also assign an event on dusk. So this on begin play will bind these custom events to these event dispatches. So whenever these event dispatches are fired off, uh, whatever is plugged into here will execute. So what we can do is grab our spotlight here and I'm just going to set intensity and on dawn, I'm going to set intensity to zero. And then we can click on the spotlight here and we can check the intensity here. I might actually turn the default intensity up to something like 10,000. And then on dusk, I am going to set it to 10,000 again, like so. Nice. So those event dispatches are bound, but we need a way of calling 
these event dispatches from our day night cycle. And this is actually pretty easy. If we go to our viewport here, you'll see a new uh, button up here that says time of day. If you click it, you can preview the time of day. You can do a couple of different things in here. But what I'm interested in is this open route sequence. So if you open the route sequence, uh, you can get rid of this uh, pop up here. It's just the sequencer tab down here that we're interested in. And this second track here, the one that says DS 24 hour, we can double click on that and it will open. Uh, I'm just going to delete this. This exists from when I was testing it out. So it will open this sequence here and now we have our day night sequence right here. And the cool thing about this all being in a sequence is that you can keyframe all sorts of different things. Uh, you know, you could have the sun size sort of grow a little bit towards the middle of the day. Uh, you could have the sun intensity be higher at the middle of the day and, you know, lower at dusk and dawn, you can do all sorts of things in here. So what we're actually going to do is click this little plus icon on the root day sequence actor, and we are going to attach a new binding and the new binding is going to be our BP day night manager. And now we have our BP day night manager is within our day night sequence here. We can click the plus icon on the day night manager and we can go to event and trigger and it will add this event track right here. And this is what I deleted that, uh, you know, I already had here from testing. So I'm going to show you how to set it up from scratch. I'm basically going to find the keyframe that is dawn, which will be at about 40 here when the sun starts to come up. And I'm going to add a keyframe on my events track right here. I'm also going to find dusk, which yeah, let's make it about 115. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit later, 118, and add a keyframe there. And then what you can do is you can right click on these keyframes and go to properties. And right here, you can bind this quick bind and just search for on uh, dawn. And you see here under BP day night manager, we've got on dawn event. That's that custom event that we created. We can click that and it will automatically create inside of your sequencer blueprint. It will create this call on that keynote. It will call on dawn event in the day night manager. You can go back to the sequencer here. You can right click out on dusk keyframe and you can go to properties and bind quick bind and search for on dusk and you'll have on dusk event right here. And that will also create that node and call on dusk event in your BP day night manager. I'm just going to make sure all of these blueprints are compiled and this should be working now. If I hit play, the lights will switch off at dawn and then we'll wait a few seconds. I've got some startup chug there. Wait a few seconds until the sun goes down and at dusk, these lights will turn back on. And you can literally use this method to bind any sort of events in your world to your day night cycle. You could even uh, bind habits of your NPCs. So your NPCs could have a day night life cycle. You could have uh, fires that, you know, turn on at nighttime lights. You can, you name it, you can literally uh, take any actors in your world and you can use this exact same method uh, where on begin play, you can bind to on dusk and on dawn in your uh, BP uh, day night manager or any other events that you choose in your sequencer. You know, you could have midnight, midday, uh, any anything you want. And that's it. Guys, if this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.